Hello. Hello. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. <laughs> and we're here. We're coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut, yep. where we live with our dog Tarquin. Yes. Today is Saturday, April 2nd. This is episode 58. Wow. And this is our little YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, buying yarn. Buying yeah, patterns. because that's a thing. Yeah. And all that good stuff. So I might have to sneeze. Welcome back to our returning viewers. Welcome to any new viewers. If you like what we if you like do, what you see. If you like what you see, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatevs. Do all that crazy YouTube stuff. So, so this is wonderful. It's Saturday. It is Saturday. Last week we recorded on a no, not last week. The week before we recorded on a Sunday. Yeah, two so weeks. So we're ago. back on a Saturday. It may not go up until Sunday though, because we are we're trying some trying, new equipment. Right. Basically, the iPad wasn't charged. Correct. We got a new computer, and we thought, maybe maybe we can try and see how it works out here. Yeah. But I think it takes a long time to process things and do its own its stuff. So maybe you'll see this by the time we put out the next episode. I don't know. Yeah, and the thing that we have to get used to is the camera's <laughs> different. When we use yes, the iPad, above. the camera was over here on the left. No, I'm just kidding. You get you're really confused. I know I am. So the camera you see Kevin's already the left. very confused. I am. There's too much going on on the screen for me. Yeah. Now you guys can see our almost our full stash. <laughs> so you're really gonna say that we have too much on. But it's you know not what? Not that bad. No, you know what I thought. This is the yarn of two people. It's not just one person's yarn. This is the yarn of two people. Right. And my mom sometimes takes yarn from here. Well, yeah. we give my mom yarn from here too. It's a communal stash. If you see something you like, <laughs> oh look how cute! Oh wait, oh my gosh, oh. this guy—he's so cute. Yeah, where's the other one? Um, I don't know. And I oh, was here just, he is. I was just oh yeah, and then I was just seeing that this is the um, picture that Jedi Dragoon drew, yeah. drew for us. That's interesting. You can that see a little bit more. Stuff. So let's um, start with what we're wearing. Okay. Yeah. Don't we usually talk? Okay. Well, let's do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, we'll do. It's your show. So I'm wearing clockwork. You are. By Stephen West. The only thing I know about this is that the orange yarn is from actually both. Might be Shibui. Oh, this really? This orange yarn is definitely Shibui because I have it right there. Oh wow, that's so fun! I got it on sale at New, New, New Haven years ago. Mm. Um, and this nice. is a—it's really hard to see, but this is like a green color. Yeah. And when I <laughs> knit this. I initially thought my green was going to be the main color, mm -hmm. um, so obviously it did not turn out the way that I thought, but it's a nice, long, shallow shawl. Yeah, it's really, really nice to wear underneath like a jacket, even like a thick winter jacket. Um, yeah, it's garter stitch and slip stitches, so super easy. A lot of stitches, though, so it does take a little bit yeah. of time. And that's um, all fingering, you said? Yeah, all fingering, and this is the second one I made. I made one for you. You did. And then this one for me. Yeah. I think this was the first one I knit, though. I feel like I should have shaved today. I shaved today. You did good. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm knitting. Or no. knitting, wearing. Great. That's what I wore. Um, I am wearing the Vertices Unite, also by Stephen West. He, well, our, Most of our shawls, I think, are Stephen West shawls. Most of my shawls that I've knit. This um, was part of the knit-along that the fellows over at Fiber Hustle did. This past summer? Was it last summer? It was last summer. Last yeah. summer. And this is using all of um, Amanda Knits in her Harry Potter club. It all turned out to be, if you are new here, it all turned out to be like uh, based on dragons and dragon eggs. So each skein was based on a specific dragon. There were pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's confusing me because we're on different sides. I know. Hopefully it'll flip when it does its thing but um i love this it was such a fun knit you've knit two of them already i've knit two and i have plans for a third one i think i'm probably going to do a second one at some point with actually amanda knits the supernatural club yeah but it's it's really really pretty yeah it's, um and it's a nice it's a it's a really really nice size shawl it is my most worn shawl yeah and this is my favorite color pop of color here yeah yeah um, all right, so that's what we're wearing. What yeah, because we're in kind of springtime. Um, we're transitioning. We are transitioning. So this, these, are, the shawls I think are nice with a little t-shirt underneath. 
Um, so let's talk about our two weeks. Let's talk about... Oh, oh. screensaver. Well then. Hi. Okay. We should probably turn that off at some point, eh? Yeah, that's right. Um, so two weeks. Two weeks. What have we done? Oh, so we'll do Tarquin Talk next. So let's... <laughs> that's part of our two weeks. That's mainly our two weeks. So um, Tarquin... First, thank you everybody who's reached out. Yeah, that was so, um, so nice. And commenting Sharing your about own Tarquin. experiences and stories and things. Yeah. It's it, going to annoy me now. I, I was... <laughs> I had good judged. Um, it was super helpful to hear from people yes. in their experiences with the same injury. So yeah. after the last episode, that Monday, you took Previously Tarquin. Previously on Needles at the Ready. You took Tarquin to the orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic specialist, yeah. And the consultation came back with a recommendation for surgery, but surgery is not necessary yeah it wasn't emergent at that time um he didn't seem to be in any pain and he was starting to improve which we talked about i think on the last episode so we chatted with our vet um you know it, it took us a while to get to the decision but we thought that we would just um let him heal on his own which he is doing and our vet is on board with that for some conservative management we're, we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing we had baby gates up and everything he's slowly we started introducing walks back into his regimen because the surgeon and the vet said that he does need to, to uh, put weight on that leg so that it doesn't atrophy. Um, so we've been doing that. Um, he does get pretty tired after a walk, though. You can yeah. tell that the leg gets a little bit weak. But slowly, you know, we're doing like you would physical therapy and stuff. Just you start nice and slow and get everything strengthened. He's um, starting to jump up on things with supervision. Very, very limited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's definitely on the mend. His energy level is back with a vengeance. Oh, goodness gracious. And we don't know what to do with him. He's yeah, starting we, to gain weight, too, because we the way that we tried to keep him calm was... Treats. Treats. You know, like hiding treats and doing things because he's so food motivated. So the interesting thing, though, with the injury, it's a CCL, which is kind of the equivalent to an ACL in humans, mm -hmm. but not... Because with an ACL in humans, they would do a surgery to repair. You can the replace. Limb. You can actually replace the the ACL. So in dogs, you can't do that. So no. what, this, there's three different types of surgeries for this injury, and the one that the orthopedic specialist had recommended is a suture one. So what they do is they do some sutures by the knee, and all that's there to do is to stabilize stabilize the knee with scar tissue. It, yeah. it, forces the scar tissue to form in that exact spot and if it doesn't um heal properly it would have to be done again if it fails so the scar tissue will form naturally it i just don't know myself whether it would form in that exact spot but yeah. the knee will stabilize on its own it's just yeah. going to take longer It'll so take we time so i think our thought process was because he wasn't in pain yep to have him do surgery and then be in pain. And then we had talked to our vet knowing that we would have to keep him on like some sedation medication for like six to eight weeks because of his energy level. Yeah. Um, so we just we didn't, didn't think it was worth that for his kind of quality. And he may eventually, he may require the surgery. So if that's the case, if it's, you know, a hundred percent required, obviously we would do it, but right now it's not needed. Yeah. I guess. And it's, right? Yeah. We're we're doing it's going it's going well. It's very stressful, but it's going yeah. well. Um so that's the main thing of our two weeks. Well That's Tarquin talk. That's Tarquin talk. And then other than that, I've taken some time off of work to stay home with him. You did as well. I'm off this upcoming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to give another week of supervision. Yeah. Yep. Um And then um I've had school and I'm really disappointed. I was so excited. We talked a little bit about um the film class that I was in and like looking forward to some of these, these like older films. But the past couple of films that we've had to watch are just clips and they're all like newer films, which is fine. But um, I was really excited to have an excuse to, and I, I'm sure I could do it on my own, but to, you know, watch the birds. Cause I thought that that was on the syllabus, but she didn't want to do it. Didn't FYI, my instructor has not given me a single grade in the past four weeks. And didn't you say you have to watch of my cement? No, no. Children of Men? Yeah, I did that. Oh, did you? I didn't watch the whole movie, just a clip. Oh, okay. Yeah, she just wants us to watch clips, which is bizarre. I know. Um, so that's been going um, well. I have midterms. I haven't taken a midterm in 
years. Nursing classes don't have midterms. <laughs> um, what else? I don't know. What so that's that. And I'm oh, taking my religion update? class. We did a shop update. Oh, my god. Yeah, goodness. it was so unexpected. Yes. Um, I had a bunch of yarn that had been dyed. What month are we in? We're in April. Probably February. Yeah. And I finally was able to, with the two of us being home and him feeling better, I was able to um, get pictures taken, create the listings and all that good stuff. So just was like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Um, so we did that last Sunday. It was Sunday. And we did put a post on YouTube. I don't know how to make posts, but it worked because people were responding yeah. and commenting. And then we also announced it on Instagram as well. And it's been working out really well. We have some um, yarn still available so we'll show. show yeah and it came out so nice and then kevin has been like dying things and just putting them up mm-hmm. as they go yeah which i'll is probably really put cool. up some new yarns on but like monday tuesday wednesday somewhere around yeah there. i have some stuff that i just need to skein and pictures and all that good stuff so yeah the so house is you. a disaster the dining room is a disaster because that's is. our staging area for like packing things and packing. drying yarn and all of that yep Since but it's worth dyer. it it's fun it's nice now that they've um They've gone out. People have been receiving them. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to see, like, pictures and and see what you guys do with them, which is really cool. I feel like today I don't know where to look. I feel like my eyes are keep going down. How about you? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to, to look at the camera. <laughs> I know. It's weird. <laughs> but I don't know. I keep I, looking at you. It's so weird doing different setups. Yeah, it's um, okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, admin. We have two knit-alongs going on. We do. So there was a question, and I don't know if you remember, and I forgot to check. No. So apparently, with I know nothing. The new one. So our new one is shawl it off. Shawl it off. And that is oh, we don't have them here, huh? One of the prizes for that is the Delacue. The Delacue OMG. Maker's Portfolio, which is the yes. needle case, and then the Maker's Bags, yes, which you'll show actually a little bit later. So we have that one. We have a chatter thread and an FO thread. And the question was that the hashtag, I think we said two different things. We did? Yeah. So in the notes, I think it says shawl it off is the hashtag. I did hashtag shawl it off. And then I believe we said in our episode that it was hashtag NATR shawl it off. No, let's just do it's shawl it off. All right, so shawl, shawl it off. off. Nobody else owns that on Insta. Okay. Um, and I put that also on like our Ravelry at the bottom there. So hashtag shawl it off. If you use NATR shawl it off, I'll follow that one too. But Or just go into the post and edit it. Yeah, and that's there you do, go. Um, hashtag and add shawl that off. hashtag. Perfect. Um, so we only have like 13 FOs right now. So your chances are pretty high of winning some Delicue goodness. When does that end? End of May or end of April? This ends... We have no idea. Apparently, I didn't put it in here. I want to say I said the end of April. I think you might have. Yes. All right. So end of April. Oops. And then we it have... Was it on our show notes? Probably what? not. Uh, maybe. And then we have our spring cleaning now, yes. which is... Um, you guys um, just, just do... Just a mouth to finish you your whips. Yeah. And that, I don't know that we've chosen... Pro- One of that is going to be a portfolio. Yes, and then and we also have... Bag. Yep, and we got those awesome minis that were donated to us. Yes. So I think we'll probably end up um, sending some of those along as well. We've gotten some really cool things. Mm-hmm. We'll have to go through our um, our prize oh, bin. Prize bin. Yes. All right, so that's... Oh, and one more thing for our admin is that we are now... Oh, yeah. Um, affiliates for Jimmy Bean's Yeah, which wool. is interesting. I don't know how that really works, but we'll have a link. Like, if you... Our if affiliate you, link below. Yeah, if, so if you go... If you're interested in the Delicue stuff and you want to um, purchase some things, I think it's from Jimmy Bean Wool, period. Um, just follow that link down below. It takes you there. It's nothing... No cost to you, but I think we get a little kickback or something yeah. like that. Which so that was is fun. never a big deal for us, but if you want to... Like, it's like, you know, yeah. buy a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> Buy a cup um, of coffee. All right. Cut so, a piece of pie. No. Don't. Oh my gosh, I should ask them because I really feel like... It is not... Oh gosh. It's a thing. It's not. Okay, guys. So, my family makes fun of me because for the past, I don't know, so this couple has of been decades... Go- no, it's not decades. It's less than that because it's... Uh, sometimes since Reese has been born because you and her were singing, you sang it to I was me. trying to introduce it to her because I think it's a real thing. So... I feel like there's a song or a children's saying or something 
about pi. And I think it goes something like this. <laughs> Cut a piece of pie, put it in your mouth. Guys. I okay. feel like it's a thing. So if you know that as a it thing. so not a thing. Please let me know because my family makes fun of me. We all. Yeah. Because it sounds like it should be a thing. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, no. <laughs> well, it's a, it's going to be a thing apparently now, so. But let me know if it's a really, if it's really It's kind of like that time when you said Because everybody makes fun of me. Kinda, and I'm very sensitive. It's kind of like that time where you said that we should have a place. No, we're not going to talk about that at all. <laughs> where we could no. go, where we could go and rent books. <laughs> right? Carry on. I'm surprised nobody so came next, up with that idea. That there's like a, I know, physical, I really thought, I a thought, physical place you could go and rent a book from. I don't think I was drinking at that time. No, you weren't drinking. No, it, that was, was so not good. like a I know. drinking night. I really thought I was onto something. Like that was the greatest thing in the world. Okay, all right. so that's all of our ad many things. Yeah, so let's talk about some knitting. I have. We'll do our um, coupon codes and things at the end when we talk oh, about our shop updates. And yeah, stuff. I've always I forgot about that. Today. Yeah, um, I have two. Bits. You know what I can't see is like how long we've been recording for and stuff. So I have, but that's okay. It doesn't right really matter. You have what? Two whips. Okay. Whoops, whoops. I have no FOs. I I have one FO. So I do. I think I've kind of been in a knitting funk. Not in a knitting funk. I that's don't think a, we just that's had the much, wrong word. Much time. It is. I haven't been inspired, maybe, oh. by any of my knitting. Okay. Like I've liked. I like the projects that I had been working on. I just mm -hmm. didn't have one that was. Well, until you started this, this right? So that's one. why I was going to say I have yeah. one now that I started early on Tuesday, right? That has taken all of my attention. I'm super excited to be working on it. Um, so yeah, great. I have um, one fo. I oh, I, I wanted to put on my. Gonna, sorry, not a sponsor, but this is Tufts Espresso Vanilla. It's my fave. I have this in the chapstick variety as well. Yeah, you got the chapstick. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll have this link down below. If you guys have never used um, Tuft Woolens. Tuft. No. So you see, so that's what... I, um, it just got a reflection. No, not the reflection. What I was compared from the iPad to this is that oh. our iPad okay. would... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Focus quicker. Well, we're not winning any awards for our cinematography. No, that we are not. No. So I have um, two, three whips oh. to show and one F.O., Okay. One of my whips is I made hardly any progress, but I want to talk about it because it's been a while since I chatted about it. All right, go ahead. Okay, I'll start. Place. So um, at my job, we are um, – they're, they're collecting donations for knitted items, blankets, hats, things like that. We're also um, working on being a little bit more – being really focused on like age-friendly and taking care of our geriatric population and their needs are a little bit different. I'm not going to, this is not a meeting that I would have at work. I mean, this is a meeting that I would have at work, but we're not at work. I had a lot of coffee today. Anyway, um, we're trying to stock up some supplies for, um, for some knitted goods for some of our, um, our geriatric population and people who, who may need a little bit extra warmth and, and comfort while they're in the hospital. So what I made a deal with my boss was that I would um, I would donate some stuff as long as I could knit it at work. Because I, you know, when you're in Selfish. a meeting, like, I know, well, whatever. I just need an excuse to knit. So I started knitting at work. I have a, it's, I have a very, very busy job, and it's very difficult for me to do that. But if I'm in a meeting and, um, you know, we're, the Zoom camera's on and we're not allowed to multitask, I'll sit there and I'll do my knitting. So I started, and I started last week on Monday, and I finished this yesterday, and I did a simple hat. This is a, a Ross hat. I used, I basically used Ross's numbers and, um, you know, decreases and things like that. It's free pattern. We'll have it linked down below. It's probably one of the the best patterns I think you can add to your collection. He's got um, numbers and instructions from everything from a U from a uh, fingering weight or a one all the way up to I believe bulky and it's all in one pattern which is really really great so we'll have that link down below you can get that free at his website smells like yarn.com so this is a a Ross hat let's see if it'll focus there we go I think it's really fun I used uh, lion brand heartland tweed 
And I can't find the camera. And this is 100% acrylic. And this is in Mount Rainer Tweed is the colorway, I think. Let's see if you guys can see that. There you go. And um, yeah, it was really easy to to knit. That's and well, but it's I okay. I don't mind doing that. I feel like I have power. You do not. You, know, like you are I've got not a, a lot Jedi. of power. You I am a Jedi. No, you are not. Um, I got a little fancy, and I probably didn't need to, but I did a German twisted cast on because that's just my cast on of choice lately. It kind of made a little scalloped edge at the bottom. I only did about an inch of ribbing. I did two by two rib. And then I just knit for about six inches and then started my decreases. What size needle did you use? I used a US 8, 16-inch circular needle, just because for me, knitting in the round is so much easier. And then what I ended up doing for the decreases is because I didn't have DPNs or anything. So once I decreased to the point I um, that I couldn't do it in the round anymore, I just used the 16-inch as magic loop. So I, I pulled everything forward. Really? Yeah. And that I makes it that very tight, loop. though. Right? No, I'm not, like the the 16 inch. It's yeah, so not you have to just be careful because you don't have a long cord. Long. But it seemed to work for me. I just kind of took my time with it. Oh, look where we did my ends. I have to pull that back out. That's okay. I'm, you know, I'm not looking to put this on display. You're not going to win any awards for no. weaving in your ends. So I'm going to throw this in the washer and dryer because it's acrylic. But I think it'll be, you know, I think it'll be cute for somebody to wear. Right? For Ethel. For Ethel. Or Carlotta. No. Or anybody. Any it's unisex. Anybody can wear it. Cute, right? Yeah. That's Good it. Good job. Thanks. So I'm going to start um doing that at work. You know what? I oh I don't think I showed you. One of the people that I work with is also a knitter. Mm-hmm. And um she's gonna be doing some things as well to donate. And one of the things is twiddle mitts. Have you heard of these? Twiddle, twiddle muff? Twiddle? Twiddle muff. I think it's a twiddle muff. Oh my gosh. I was like, what is this? But it makes so much sense. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminded me. Did you see on Instagram that, you know, Tom Daly? Yes, I did see that. <laughs> he has his willy warmers. Yes. So this is called. This is a twiddle muff. It's called uh, Buttons and Bows. It's a textured hand muff um, to help those with dementia. You go in like that way? So, yep. Yeah, so it's, um, here's the pattern. I'll see if I can find this on Ravelry. Um, I believe it was a free pattern. She sent it to me. Um, but the concept is that you you knit like a, a, a muff, cuff, muff thing so you have like one hand in one side and one in the other okay and on the inside you can sew like ribbons and different textures you can do different textures and add some buttons and things for people who you know have dementia they it helps it helps them have something to like to touch and 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 play with so i might yeah i might make one of those i'm gonna grab some um some of the fun yarn and see if I can do like little bobbles and things on the inside or on the outside. And I'm sure you just said it, but I probably missed it. Is yeah. it crocheted or knitted? It's knit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's knitted. I'm sure you can do crochet ones as well. And crochet would actually have uh, a more interesting texture Texture anyway with all the holes. That might be a good idea. Maybe I can see if I can convert that into a, a crochet pattern. But I thought Maybe that was really neat. If you guys are all interested, um, you know, let me know on... And I'll I'll give you some details if you're looking to, to donate something or if you have other ideas, which I thought would be really cool. All right. That's the only FO we have. That's the only FO we have. You go ahead with whips since you have more than me. All right. I will show this one. Okay. So first, I have to say I am in love with this bag. This is the Delicu, um I don't know the name of it. Maker's bag, maybe? Maker's bag, yeah. And this is the smaller one. It comes in a, a two-pack. So as I'm using this, I think a two-pack. I think they yeah. come together. They're in the spot room. As I'm using this, it's getting this really fun, like, patina. Um, and it's canvas. You can, I'm sure you can hear it. And it stays, like, closed. Just, like, at, I don't know. It's really fun. Really fun bag. Okay, anyway. So in here... I started a pair of socks. I wanted to do some self-striping, so I'm using Woolens and Nosh. 
when Kevin and I cleared out or were organizing our stash last week, the week before, yeah, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, I forgot I had gotten this and I wanted to make a pair of socks with it. So I was due for some socks. So this is percolated. I know. I have that too. It's one of my favorite It is um, so colors. good. I just don't know. It's 90% superwash targi and 10% nylon. It's a three ply. The skein is 411 yards in 100 grams. Did I get fingering as well or did I get... I think you got DK. Stop it. Look at it. No, I got fingering also. It's not focusing on that, but... Back it up. Back it up, back it up. Yeah, because you have to remember... Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is... um, I'm just doing vanilla sock. This is what I love to do. And um, this is the skein here. I didn't split it into two different skeins. I'm just going to kind of see what it is i don't need them to be super matchy matchy i'm gonna try but um i think it's like a seven color repeat or seven row repeat or something um, um you're counting yeah eight eight yeah but it's so much fun and i love the stitches like the stitch definition of this yarn it's so good i can't see it up close i'm does that are stomach? you hungry yeah i didn't eat anything and i worked out this morning so my Good body's like, yo, what's going on? I know I got to get better. I'm eating like... No, I am i haven't been working out, so I'm off. I've been eating cake at work. Oh, they look have, at that. Not really. Mm. It's Look at how he's like, oh, I bring my Caesar salad. They I did mentioned that he eats cake. Okay, so it, let me say... Yeah, please continue. It's these little... They call them... I think they call them like sugar shots or something like that. Oh, that sounds even better. It's a small little... It's only 120 calories. It's a small little cup, yeah, and it's whipped cream, yeah, cinnamon, yeah, blueberries, and then like a vanilla pound cake. Small, like there's like three pieces of vanilla pound cake, small little squares. Okay, and you eat them in like three bites. They're and how delicious. How many of them do you have? One. I have one. I do, and then sometimes I have some nutter butters. I eat much better at home. I can't be trusted. I, at no, work. I, I, I'm the same way. So. Yeah. Um, so I did 72 stitches. I did a uh, twisted German cast on, two by two rib. I did it, um, I didn't really count, oh, 19 rows. I didn't know that they were 19 rows until after I counted them. I just wanted to start, I wanted to get through this last um, color. Okay. So I counted them as 19 rows. I wish I had done 20 because 20 just seems like such uh, a more even I'm number. Right there with I know, you, you and I had this I conversation. To yeah. And then I did seven inches total from top to here. I'm going to do an afterthought heel. I was going to do um, a short row. Oh. Yeah, a short row heel or a fish lips kiss. But I think I'm just going to do afterthought. And I might use, if I have left the leftover, like yarn left over, I might do the afterthought heel in the um, in the actual self-striping. Oh, okay. To make that like bullseye thing. Because I think yeah. that looks kind of cool. I do love how that looks on Me socks. too. So I might do that. Or I have some leftovers of my... Um, Sprout socks, which might actually go well with this too. Uh, the stripes yeah, in it, but right? depending on the only thing I would say is depending on where you're doing you're doing your afterthought between. The I'm going to do it between blue. the brown and the blue. Okay. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to put my afterthought heel here. Y'all okay. See. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut this. Gotcha. This, yeah, where that's there. Okay. So I'm just you know, this was handy to just knit in the round. We've been watching some basketball, which we'll talk about. But you, I can't follow a pattern and focus on things. Yeah. So that's where we are. I'm very, very excited. Obviously, I'm knitting these on nine-inch circulars. Are you proud of yourself? Right I am now? proud of myself. <laughs> and that's all I got. But I am loving this bag. All right. I'm going to stick with the sock train. Choo choo! Mine's living in my Harry Potter bag from Twinkle and Twilight. Yes. Why do I always forget? That? You know what? I don't think we linked them down below last time. Oh, we won't be sure. So this yarn, I showed this last time. This yarn is from. It says I love to the max. Mm-hmm. But it is now Frankie Frankie Gray Fibers. Right. This is now Jody and Jordan, mm-hmm. who do this. So this is. The Call Me By Your Name colorway. It is an 8020 Superwash Merino. 400 yards, 100 grams, and it came with a mini. So here is where I'm at. 
These are so good, Kev. I really, really, really love these. I love this color. So Same. I am. Um, last time I showed it, I was down here. Yeah, you I made a lot of progress. Now done a ton. So I'm doing a. This is the Call Me by Your Name. And this mini is Peach. And if you know, you know. I did 16 rows of a 2x2 two two rib with a German twisted cast on. I'm doing Magic Loop on my Chaogu Red Lace. US 1 2.25 millimeter. That's what I'm using as well. I don't know if I said that. So once I did the 16 rows, I've done 70 rows before I did my heel. Mm. And I'm using stitch markers to count. You can see them here. And then I'm going to do, I think, oh, I did a heel flap. Yeah, it's so pretty. Which is really my favorite heel. Yeah. I just love it. Um, and I think I'm going to do 70 rows again for my foot. The only issue is that I don't have enough yarn to do my toes in the same color. So I either have to find a different color or I'm just going to Ooh, it's like... um, continue with the same. It looks really small, y'all. Well, it's the ribbing. Look, I mean, it's going to be super stretched. It like... Yeah, it's so such pretty. a really pretty color. Yeah. It's this nice... Um, I feel like there's so much... Oh, that's what it is. I feel like there's so much light in here today that things are getting blown out. You're very critical. It's okay. No, it's just a new... It's a different setup. So I think that this camera lets in more light than the iPad did. Maybe. So, um, but yeah, so it's a really nice, like, light green. And then there's green speckles, some really light yellow speckles, yes. blue, maybe some black or gray in here. But I really am um, enjoying it. I love knitting a three by one rib it allows it to hug your leg yeah a little bit more than just a vanilla sock so i think it's a good way to knit and it really is um it's still kind of vanilla -y. like yeah of course you know it's yeah. not it's not a big deal to do that no I, no no these just really i mean they fit well i've tried them on but they look right. super small and then just so you guys know you don't continue the rib on your foot you just continue it on the top not on the bottom of the foot once you get past your heel flap and gusset which makes that round go by a little faster probably yeah and i don't know did i say i cast on 64 stitches maybe i think so i think you did too and i think i'm finding that this is my preferred size needle and count is 2.25 with 64 stitches instead of the 72 on a 2.5 no on a two US 2. I've done that before, and I think this is my preferred. I like the US one. Um, so, yeah. So, that's my socks. Wonderful. Excellent. Socking it up. You are next. The next one, I did not put much progress on, but I did pull it out again. And this is living in my beautiful chip basket, which you cannot get anywhere. Not sold in stores. Not sold in stores. This is the Adventure, uh, Brioche Adventure by Jonathan Tallow. Uh, it's not a sweater. No. Let me pull it up. It is a shawl. And I've showed this before. He's so handsome. Who is doing that? Um, Sarah. So Sarah's doing this, yeah, From, over at Yarn Hellions. Yeah. Um, Helions. Hellions. Hellions. I don't I think, know why I say Helions. You know why? Is it from City of Heroes? It's when we played City of Heroes, yeah. we, we used to say Helions. Helions. Hellions. Um, and we said that initially. Yeah. And then they say Hellions. So right. It's Hellions. So this shawl is, um, is so much fun. It really is so much fun. I have... I have a lot of things happening right now. I have a, a big focus, which I'll show you in a, in a minute. So I've been really kind of focusing on that. But I made some progress. Not much. Look at Here I am. Where is it? Here it is. I did like... You almost did a section. Almost. Right? 
Or half a section. Half a section. Yeah. I definitely added in some another color. But um, this shawl is a, like a trapezoid. And I wonder if I can actually show you a picture of him holding it out. Yeah. So it's it turns into it's like a trapezoid there. Um, Nancy over at on from On the Needles and Trilogy Yarn, she did one, and hers is gorgeous. Yeah. She used her advent, her Trilogy Yarn advent. I believe it was a Christmas advent. This is using the Christmas advent from Dragon Horde Yarn and. Um, Yarn Cafe Creations, Mother Daughter. It's the Christmas at Hogwarts Year 5. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking one skein. And how cute are these like mini skeins and how they have them. I know, I do love it. But like, you know, labeled. But I'm taking one from Dragon Horde Yarn and one from Yarn Cafe Creations. Finding two that, you know, have a little bit of a contrast to them. Like I would put these two together maybe. You know, um, know. just and just randomly. There's no no rhyme or reason, but it's creating a really fun, really fun shawl. And the brioche is so squishy. It really is. And this yarn is so soft. I wonder if these are the bases that they use for their their uh, their large skeins as well. Can you imagine if we didn't do the Stephen West mystery knit along? And I would never brioche. Done brioche no. How many projects we wouldn't have done I since know. then? I know. It's so much fun. Cause you've I can't go on autopilot with brioche, though. And I know this is simple brioche, but I just I can't go on autopilot with it. I have to... I, I still have to look down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't be able yeah. to do it without... So, okay. with, you know, with Tarquin jumping up and down off of things or trying to prevent him from jumping up and down off yeah. of things, this isn't a project that I can just like, oh, wait, wait, and just put it down and pick it back up again because I would get very nervous. That's a really good point. I think that's, too, that has dictated our knitting yeah. for the past month is having something in our hands that we can easily like a put simple down project and just go grab mm -hmm. him really quick if he wants to jump off the couch or on the couch or whatever the case is so yeah. it really has impacted the type of things that we knit so that's a 24 mini skein collection the main skein i'm not quite sure what i did with it i'm sure it's up up here somewhere um so yeah i'm just gonna keep going until i get basically it'll be like 24 or 26 blocks how the way that you you knit them or uh you know strips mm -hmm. so it should be fun it'll be ready by like next year <laughs> but i really really enjoy it and now that he's feeling better and once i finish um this last big project i think i might focus a little bit more on that for the time being okay i have right. one more left i have one more this is living in my fancy boy designs bag i love this bag I so love much this bag mm -hmm. it's so, so much. cute totally so this is a new cast on. I cast this on Tuesday. I love this, Kev. This is the... How would you say that? Batad? Batted? Batted or batad? I, batad? I feel like batted... Batade? Batade? Batted? I don't know. <laughs> batade? Batad? Does it, does it give you, like... Does he tell you how to no. pronounce it? Or, like, where it comes from? Where it comes from? No. Hmm. All right. So this is a pattern by Stephen West. It is a, um, a poncho kind of whoops oh it's Cal. good so good i'm gonna show another picture of it oh i love that so i was kind of inspired by ray's poncho from last episode to kind of do one this is way different yeah it totally it, is like it doesn't cover your upper it's upper more arm. of like that kind of cape you kind know of. that um i forgot who would wear a cape like that zorro I was thinking Zoro, but I think Zoro <laughs> no, has like like a superhero one where it only it covers only, one shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Which I don't like how that looks on superheroes, but this I like. Okay. He looks handsome. So we're gonna talk about yarn choices too. So I'm gonna go back. I still haven't found the perfect project. Initially, I was going to use this skein of fingering weight from Macy over at Macy yeah. Skeins Eggnog because I really want to use it. You've been dying to use this, but. I cast on with it, and because of the, it's, um, the speckles in it. Yeah, I hate that it's blown out. So bring it's, it closer. No, it's blown out. Um, I didn't think a garter stitch would do justice to the speckles, so I took it out. And what I went with instead is these two colors. 
So here is my second color. This I this is Madeline Tosh Tweed. It's a single ply fingering, and I believe this is glazed pecans. I don't know where the tag is. It's a great colorway name. This one is Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is their show stealer base, which is 801010, which I did not realize until just now. <laughs> um, this is 801010 what? 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere 10 percent oh. nylon so it's 435 yards for 100 grams this is i will always love you so this is a nice like i don't know it's weird because it's almost like a peachy base and it has flecks of orange gray and brown in it mm. and i've loved the color combo so much so here is it's where it's I'm so good so i love it so you start, these are so fun yeah these are welts so you start from the top of the shawl or cowl or poncho whatever <laughs> it is you do a provisional cast on using this color which i've never done before it was very interesting i thought i twisted it and you use your needle, but then you also use another cord. Oh. And. Will you have that tutorial linked down below? I'm going to see if I can find. I should have it because it stores it in your YouTube yeah. history. Yeah. So I'll put the link below. But it was. You create a stitch on your needle and then you create a stitch on the cord. Oh. And then once you're ready to you flip them together and then knit two together really yeah so it was really interesting i obviously had never done anything like that um super easy i think more people well no i'm not that's a lot it's not super easy to figure out whether or not you twisted it and you need a really long cord to do it because i um i tried it with a 16 inch cord and um it just it, i don't know it was too close together I didn't have the ability to actually knit my first row of stitches. And then the other thing that I had an issue with was the cord didn't move and I forgot to put a stopper on one end and oh. my stitches fell off the second oh, cord. No. Um, I was able to pick them up pretty easily. But yeah, so this is knit on a US 5. Yeah, US 5, 3.75 millimeter. Knit in the round. There are some, so you do short rows to create the depth yeah, of it. Yeah, it looks really cool. So here's the back. Um, where's the join? Probably like right here. So the welts no. go the whole way? Yeah, the welts go the whole way. You That's a lot of knitting. Oh my gosh. I'm getting better at figuring out where to pick up my welts. Uh -huh. And then you have yarn overs. So you knit your welt, then you knit here. And then when you add your next welt, you do some yarn overs to add stitches. So you're adding the same number of stitches every section. And there's going to be nine of these sections. Oh, you, and you've I done think a ten, good amount. Ten welts, possibly. So, yeah, it's just, it's nice because it's garter stitch. It's short rows, yarn overs. The welts do take a bit of time yeah. to um, pick up your stitches. Well, because you're knitting it and then you're folding it. Right, so you knit nine rows, and then you fold it, yeah. and then pick up stitches from the row, mm -hmm. from eight rows below, and then knit two together, yeah. all the way around. And it got a little confusing with the yarn overs, where to like pick up, so I don't know if I've done it right every single time. I think the more I've been doing this, the better I've been getting at picking up my welts. Okay. The only thing I don't know is and i thought about this as i'm knitting it oh no i think no okay so i'm gonna wear it this way i feel like my welts should they're like going in the wrong direction because they're going up because of the way it's being knit so i don't know if they'll lay flat i'm sure they will after it's oh blocked. i'm sure they will you know like yeah maybe that's yep, the it'll, design it'll relax for sure choice i don't know but it's such a such a pretty it's gorgeous pretty fabric and 
It's so unique. It made me excited to knit it. So that's yeah. all that matters. That is all that matters. You do you, boo. Um, do I have anything else to say about this? Oh, there's a lot of ends because you have to break your yarn after every section. No. Yeah, so I've been going in and weaving doing some weaving in. Steven? Well, I've been doing weaving Steven, and then I've been going in and just weaving some more in as, Secure as I knit. Because mm -hmm. even with doing... I have, like, something in my contact. Even with doing um, the weaving Steven, I still do some additional weaving in of my ends. Because hmm. I don't trust ends. I have a fear of ends falling out. I know you do. So I like to be extra careful and... Oh, and um, secure them a little bit more. So that yeah, is all wonderful. of my um, knitting. Just wonderful. Good. All right. I have up. one more. Okay. This will hopefully be an FO at the next installment. Oh, I'm of like, what is the next thing? Needles at the ready. This is my Radari. Radari. I think that's how you say it. I feel like that. And who told us something about this? What's his face? From Bakery Bears. Dan. He didn't tell us Dan? about it. Not personally. him, but somebody <laughs> said. No, somebody said that he ju had just knit one and we watched an episode recently. We did, and he, he was, was wearing, wearing it. it. So this is uh, Radari. It's an Icelandic uh, Lopi Designs sweater. Not Icelandic. Um, yeah, it's an Icelandic. Oh, yeah, Icelandic. Yeah. Um, it. I, I chose the exact same colors um, to do it because I loved it so much. I am knitting the extra large size, which is 107 centimeters chest circumference, which is about 42 inches uh, yeah. chest. And I am using the recommended yarn and the same colors. <sighs> this whole sweater is actually a gauge swatch. This whole sweater, yeah, because I didn't gauge swatch. My sleeves were a gauge swatch. Um, the colors that I'm using are murky. I'm using, I think, 14, 18, straw. And this is Let Lopi, 100% uh, wool. <laughs> and it's a... Uh, Icelandic wool. Icelandic wool. It's, uh, it's very rustic and crunchy. But as I'm knitting with it, it's softening up so much already. And a lot of you have given some really good tips on how to how to soak the yarn, but I'm I'm super excited to see it um, blocked because I think it's going to be so comfortable. This is barley. Barley is a, a pretty color. It's pretty, right? Yeah. And then the last color, which I don't have a full skein here, it's over there. But this is um, black sheep. It's they ran out of the regular black. So I got uh, okay. black sheep something. Okay. Yeah. it's on. I think I said it on the last um, episode. I cannot remember. I was going to say, these don't say the name. No. Well, if they did, but they'd th probably be in a different language. Maybe. I don't know. Everything else is in English. Pure new wool. No, it's not. No. Anyway. So last you saw this, I had one sleeve done. And I think I cast on the second sleeve. So I have now both sleeves done. Boop, boop. Which is good, right? Yeah. Fun. They yeah. they match. They're even. Are they? They are. And you have them on I, your... I have these on the... Um, pony bead lacing. Pony bead lacing, which we have a link to that down below where you can get it from Amazon, which is where we got it from Amazon. Um, it was pretty inexpensive. So I got both of the sleeves done, and look what I did. Look what I did. I got most of the body done. So I'm only about two centimeters away from attaching the sleeves and then starting the, um, whatchamacallit? Yoke. The yoke. Nice. Right? Yeah. So the stitches... I think are pretty even. They look good. It's it's definitely challenging to knit this because the way that they spin this with like the hairs, the the guard hairs, fibers. Yeah, they're, I think they're called guard hairs. A guard um, hair? Mm -hmm. oh. It's like the outer layer of like hair on top of like the wool or mixed in with the wool that helps with their with the um, 
uh, what is what am I looking for? Helps with the like waterproofing and and different things. So there, the hairs are kind of going all over the place. So when you're knitting, you can sometimes catch those, and it feels like oh. you're like ripping the stitch, but you're really not. Um, I'm loving it. Yeah, the color work looks pretty good. Like, yeah, I think. Yep. And then I'm a little bit concerned. And I'll have to have you take a look at the instructions. So the instructions are very simple. It doesn't. It's on one page. It doesn't take you step by step. It expects you to know um, knitting techniques and things. But it is simple enough that if you're a basic, if if you understand basic uh, knitting, like, yeah. and what they're asking you, you do it just fine. To tell you to stand up. No. Oh. No. It's probably gonna tell me in a minute. Um. I'm knitting this on the recommended needle size. I did get gauge, so I I just I hated I hated knitting uh, a gauge. I hate knitting a gauge swatch in the round because I hate bringing that. You know, instead of knitting like in the round, you can like knit it flat and kind of make it mimic knitting in the round right. by bringing the 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 yarn over. I hated that. I, I get. I don't know what it is. It gives me such like. Ajita with all these strands of yarn all over the place. So I just started knitting the sleeve with the recommended needles, um, got through the color work portion and measured my gauge and I got gauge. I measured the gauge on the, uh, the main body and I got gauge there as well. This is going to be a good color though, huh? Yeah. That's nice. I'm so excited. I'm going to hopefully wear this for Rhinebeck. Um, it may be warm though. I know, but I have, I'll have a fingering weight sweater done too hopefully and then i'll also have that brio shawl done by rhinebeck these are all the things i'm going to bring with me to rhinebeck We're, you're going to bring a suitcase i'll bring a suitcase yeah. because last time at rhinebeck i wanted to try i wanted to wear different things i know we this i wore at one point at rhinebeck last year yeah we had to go out to the carter yeah, for so outfit you, changes you got to be prepared and then i'll definitely wear my knit socks i'll bring some hats knit socks what if it's warm remember so no, i'll still wear knit socks because it it wicks away the moisture e even if you're wearing shorts on a warm day yeah, if I wear shorts. You're wearing long socks? No, I might. Maybe I'll knit a pair of shorties. Okay. Maybe I'll do some Rhinebeck socks. Okay. Maybe I'll put my name on my socks. I'll like embroider them or something. Nobody would see them. I'll see them. I'll, maybe I'll do knee highs. In like a lace weight, so it's not as thick. Anyway, um, love this. I'm very, very excited. Uh, and that's, I think that's all I have to say about it. All right. Right? Yeah. Anything else? It smells really nice. I've been putting um, lotion on before knitting this, and it makes a uh, very, very big difference. It does feel a little bit different. It does, doesn't it? Knit up than it does. Like in it, there's a ball. no getting away from that. It's 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 rough, rough. But, but it's definitely a lot softer. Hair conditioner and Dawn were recommendations. Yeah, I don't know Dawn. Somebody else said don't do Dawn. Oh, but I'll do. Maybe I'm going to do something else then. So. It, for the first block, I'm going to do um, a nice wool wash and let it sit for a while. And then I'll, you know, I'll block it flat, hopefully. And then after that, if I feel like it needs a little bit more, I can give it another another dunk in something else. Dawn was recommended for the Holster Garn. Oh, okay. That that one. That's okay. the Holst Garn Super Soft. Yeah. There's So oh, my point was, I'm at joining the sleeves it gives some directions on putting the first couple of stitches on uh, uh waste yarn okay but it doesn't make sense to me how because it tells you to put a certain number of the last stitches and a certain number of the first stitches on waste yarn and then join and and then join the uh the sleeve so if which makes sense. However, if I put so, for example, here, right? No, so no, I have of the body, right? On waste yarn. Oh, the body on waste yeah, yarn. Yeah. So if I put these are the last couple of stitches here. Yeah. If I put these on waste yarn, no problem. But if I put these on waste yarn, my working yarn is attached to that first. You do uh, on stitch. your way around. Well, that's what I was thinking. I would think. I don't know. I'm sure there's a video. Maybe. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Yeah, I, I would think that you would do it on your but way. But I stopped back. last night because I didn't want to get to that point and then make it, you know, make a boo boo. Yeah. Hey, boo boo. That's what I would think at least. That's my initial thought yeah. is that you would do it on your way back at the end of the row. So look at guys, isn't that fun? Yeah, good job. Thanks. I'm very very proud of this. Oh, and this is living in my naughty knitting sack. 
Oh, look at the fuzz balls from the yarn. Isn't that funny? And then inside are some hot mermen in various poses and in various states of undress. Well, mermen can't really be in different states of undress because they don't... Well, so They're I just think not wearing shirts. True. However, some of their fins are a little lower cut. And then, like, this one has a more pronounced hiney. You see that? Mm. You, see, you can see the, like, the little crack in there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So all that right. is that. So that is all of our knits. Yeah. Oh, and I've gone through a lot of, a lot of yarn. And now... Look at... Oh, jeez. I know. We're not going to do a count this time. I'll no give counting. you a full count after it's all done. Now we have... Oh, before we jump now into... Now it's time to say goodbye. Um, I will post to in... To all our jamboree. Breaking the bank. I'm just going to show some yarn that's still um, in the shop. Am I see? So these two... See you real soon. I had to take new pictures of it because the pictures I originally took just weren't accurate. Yeah. So my pictures of these, unfortunately, aren't great on Etsy. So this is... I love it. Dark and Stormy. This is actually a very um, blue-gray. Mm -hmm. And every time I take pictures, it comes across way more gray yeah. than it does like I blue. Love, yeah, like this. Like you can see, like it's fun. And this you can definitely one, see the blue-gray here. Yeah. This one's peachy keen. So this is like this some is orangey, orangey peach color. Mm -hmm. And these are both on BFL, which I just had and decided to dye. I bought like, I don't know, maybe 20 skeins of it and dyed 10. Oh, yeah, 20. I yeah, dyed 10, 10 of these 10. and 10 of those. Mm -hmm. um, I think both have maybe like eight left or something like yeah. that. So those are nice. I wish we had left one so that we can knit with it to see how it, how the BFL knits up. But it feels like... Um, it feels sturdier. Nice, very strong. Than a 75, and, yeah, strong, substantial and soft. Merino. Yeah. Um, so 75% Superwash BFL, 25% nylon. It's 464 yards. Yeah. Um, and I think the rest I picked were all, are these all 80, 20 that I picked? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder how come I didn't put this, oh, whatever. All right. So here's purple rain. Um, this is on 80, 20. So it's like just gray and purple speckles. I love the speckling on them. It's not, it's not like in your face. Oh, wait. But they're like so cute. And then, um... I don't know. It's getting blown out a little bit. But. Because of our lighting. So our lights are just so bright today. And we mm -hmm. have the overhead light on, which we typically don't. Oh, have. yeah. I forgot about that. And then this one I call Tomorrow. I love so it. This one is like a the gray come out. and blue and yellow. And I thought that it reminded me of the sun peeking through like storm clouds. And then we thought the sun would come out tomorrow. And then just bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow to tomorrow. There'll be sun. And then last is Double Dare. And this, again, it's blown out. But this is, um, it reminded me of the slime. from. It is Double totally Dare. the slime from Double Dare. So that's where that is. Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's like a more, uh, it's it's definitely brighter, showing up a lot brighter. On yeah, thing. it's just our yeah. lighting's pretty bad today. Yeah. That's probably more accurate. Yeah, that's more accurate. Yeah. It's totally the, the slime. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. There's tomorrow. So you got to get all right up in their faces. And yeah, so this is in the shops. As Don't well you have other ones thing. in the shops? Yeah. Oh, you didn't bring them all up? No, I wasn't going to bring every. Oh, you should. Color. You should be so proud, Kev. I'm so proud of you. Oh you did a God, really good job. Thank you so much. You oh, are so supportive. Yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> you better buy me lunch. <laughs> I am. I have to go to the post office. I know. Um. We were waiting for some boxes to come in. Some of you, you guys bought so much yarn that was so so awesome we didn't have enough big enough bags yeah i'm waiting for boxes so I yeah so humbling the post office um all right so let's do coupon codes okay so coupon codes we have i really love this espresso vanilla isn't it nice yeah it's one of my favorite smells mm. from them um oh, all right have more. our coupon codes are all down below they are so we have naughty knitting sacks we do so if Which, you're interested, I don't know if she has any what she has left in her shop, but the code is PRICKLEPANTS15 mm -hmm. for 15% off your order. Trilogy yarns. Code is NATR15 for 15% off anything excluding her clubs. Mm -hmm. She she's, is if you are in the Seattle yes. area, right? She's gonna be at Vogue Knitting next week. Yeah. 
So go yeah. check her out. If She's you got a, are in a the lot area. of yarn. They've been dying, 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 dying. Oh, that was something else that... Hold on. Let okay. me go back. I'm going to gather everything. All right. Gather your Knit thoughts. Swag. Um, mm-hmm. Knit Swag's code is Kevin and hey, Ray look, for 15% off your order. You can't read it. Then we have Lila Styles. The code is Love NATR10 for 10% off your order. We should get some summertime mugs. Okay. From Knit Swag. We would need to clean out our mug cabinet. Our mug cabinet's pretty full. It's full of Knit Swag. <laughs> it's full of Knit Swag and like Harry Potter mugs. Mm. And then some really old ones from Christmas Tree Shop. Yeah. Um, always Queenie Believe. The code oh, is yeah. 9 inch circ for 20% off your she order. She has amazing things. I know. I use my. Oh my gosh, um, me too. So I have the. Oh, I wish I brought it up. Bo- bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. Um, that she sent us, and it's right next to me where I sit on the couch to knit. Yeah. So that I always have a darning needle scissors tape um, measure and a tape measure mm-hmm. readily available for there's stitch markers in there really really nice then we have um katie did bags yes. the code is kevin and ray 10 for 10 percent off your order and then also below that again will be our affiliate link for jimmy beans wool yes so that's our codes so let's talk about owl posts which you have on your side i don't have it yeah you do i have nothing here you know, oh, sorry, I didn't, oops, oops, dropping stuff, oops. Yeah, because you were, you were the spend spender this time. Oh my gosh, guys, I went on like a shopping spree. You did. All right. This is so nice, and this was so unexpected. Yeah, so we got this pet just the other day. I actually have to reach out to her and thank her from too, Sydney, who is in Connecticut, and sent us some stitch markers after watching the last episode um so she is stitchy squid knitting notions so sent us some stickers these are gonna go on my Uh uh-oh uh-oh your book's downstairs you didn't bring it with you oh no my book it's a tarquin oh yeah no i know i didn't bring my reference book i was saying uh oh it's a tarquin hi books hi handsome you're gonna lay down your bed um so she said in the in our previous episode that um, she realized that some of these beads reminded her of Tarquin mm-hmm. at the moment, and then some reminded her of Ray's um, Ranger, and then another one because of our love of fantasy. Another one reminded her of dragons. I so, can't wait to use these. These would be the reminder of Ray's um, Ranger, the Greens. Mm-hmm. These, the browns and tans, would be um, reminders of Tarquin. These are so nice. These are, and the clasps are a little bit different. Oh, look, it says Ranger Ray. Oh. How freaking cute is that? No, this says Kevin the Magic Dragon, and this says Oh, my God. I didn't even notice that. So this has the... um, Come on. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. And this is um, Teeny Tarquin. And then this is Kevin the Magic Dragon. Puff the Magic Dragon. You know what? That kind of makes me want to watch. Um, and frolicked in the autumn. What's the name of that movie? Pe- Peace, Peace Dragon? Dragon? The old one. Yeah, the old one. I haven't, I, we, watched, the I haven't watched the new one yet either. So thank you very much. I feel like much, you can't do that with a um, classic. Sydney. And she's on Instagram at, as at Squid Knits. Which, now, I don't know if we... I like to make sure that we're following. Same. Squid. You know, it's very difficult to to manage two different accounts. <laughs> Follow back. Okay. So that's our, our owl post. And then I went on a shopping spree the last two weeks. Squidney knits. No. Squid knits. I just followed her. Isn't that her, though? No. Squid. No, I see what you're saying, but there's another one called Squidney knits. There you go. So good. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, so I did a shopping spree. So I'm going to start with my first purchase. This is from Hugh Loco. This is from last year's um, Backyard Chicken Collection. So it was being retired. So good. This is called, I don't know. Blue Splash Wheeler. So... The minis are rose hip and mauve. So I'm going to go rose hip and mauve. Mm-hmm. And then this is 
the, nope, that's a lie. This is pumpkin. I was going to say that is, is not a rose hip. Juniper. Yeah. And then this is blue splash Wheaton. Where did you see mauve? So, so I didn't realize that these are the different types of roosters. Oh, and, and she's, she underlined, underlined which one. So this How is fun. an 80-20 superwash merino nylon, 400 yards, 100 grams, and then 220-gram minis. So it has some beautiful yellows and oranges and gray and white. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of fun things, too. So I dyed some yarn yesterday with pinks and, like, a purple. Yes. And I'm I love call it. it Gem from Gem and the Holograms because that's Gem. exactly what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So... Got this What's the gem set. theme song? Gem, tr is it truly amazing? Hmm. I don't remember. We'll have to. The movie was so bad. Remember watching? No, the I didn't movie? watch oh, the movie. Bad. No. All right. But I watched that He Man, the Masters of the Universe movie. We haven't though. watched season two though. Oh, of, you meant the movie. no, the movie the with Rolf in the eighties. Yeah, that was bad oh, too. It was so bad. Yeah. Awful. Okay. So next purchase. Taking a page out of Ray's book, I made some Icelandic yarn purchase. How could you not? The price is amazing, and yes. the shipping is great and so fast. So for two, I bought yarn for two sweaters. I just spilled tea all over myself. My first one is going to be the easiest to show. So this, I decided to make the purchase after watching Cabin Boy Knits. Christopher yeah. finished his John sweater. This is gorgeous. And I decided immediately that I needed to purchase the yarn for it and knit it myself. Yeah. So I got... I kit. love that it, it comes with a printed pattern. Yeah, it came with a printed pattern. You can also buy it with the needles included. The kits come with enough to knit the large and I believe the extra large as well. They had the black for yours, but not for mine. Because it was already... Oh, you had up. A, I didn't buy a kit. I just put it together myself. So the kit itself, y'all, was like $40. Yeah. I think. Something like that. Um, so this is on the Letalope. That's not bad. No. And so it's black, gr light gray, and a, like regular gray. The colors are black, dark gray, light ash, and ash. So here's the other two. Yeah. And then the black. Mm -hmm. And... I can't wait this till you one. start knitting this. Oh, yeah. See, doesn't it feel so different? Yeah. The yarn? So, that was my first yarn purchase. Then my second one was for this sweater. Oh, gosh, you're crazy. I have no idea what I'm thinking. Neither do I. That I'm going to knit this sweater, but I'm going to give it a go. In the same colors? This is the same colors. So, this to me looks blue. Yeah, it looks blue to me, too. It's gray. Is it really? Yeah, which I'm kind of surprised about. But oh. And that's called what? Not. Yeah, not. we're going to go with nope. not. And this is knit using Plotilope. Guys, let's talk about... This is interesting. So we got the plate of yarn that is like, what did Aaron call it? Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Because it literally just Boop. pulls apart. But then you can just put it right back together. For you. Oh, thanks. Um, and then you have... This feels... The black. But then you could just... Look at it. It goes right back together. Yeah. So this, I will have to be careful, like, knitting. Especially the black. You're, on, you're, you're crazy. Um, and then this is... Wow. All the gray that I'll need. Wow. And they're connected. The plates. Oh, wow. That's cool. So this, you can really feel the oils on it after um, you've touched oh, yeah. it. And handled it for a bit. So, um. Yeah. yeah. So we bought some yarn for sweaters. Now, what is the, I know it's wool, but like, what's the process? Does it, does it talk about like plotilope? Like what it. No, it, it just says this is plotilope. Okay. So no, um, the garment is made of two ply, two ply plotilope unspun yeah. wool. Oh, um, it's unspun wool. Wind softly two strands of wool together from the plates before knitting. 
she have to hold a double? I have well, to at wind. least the chart doesn't look bad. So I guess what I could do is I could take the yarn from one plate and another, and if I... Except for the black. And then maybe I could just wind them on my yarn winder and make a ball. Oh, yeah. Who said that? Carrie said Carrie that. did. What a... She's smart. She's Carrie smart. from Creative Obsession. Follow her. She is the most cleverest, I, actually, crafty, creative person I've ever met. I'm going to send her a message today because I watched an older episode, and she had a tip for cleaning... Um, the dye pans when she was dyeing yarn yeah with alcohol oh is that why we have the alcohol that is oh, why yeah. we have the alcohol and it works so well it's such a good tip she's and, she's so good yeah. she's and, the one did we show like she's the one that she knit us knit us sent us a we did bring the card up yeah yeah the christmas card that was quilted quilted, the quilted christmas, christmas card, card. What? or postcard rather postcard. it was a quilted postcard um so guys, that's it. That's it. That's all the knitting content. So it's let's all the talk yarny about goodness. What we've been reading and watching. So watching. This is gonna be a short episode. It is. Watching has been a ton of basketball, men's and women's March Madness. We're from Connecticut, so obviously we watched UConn. We watched the UConn women's game last night, UConn which was played poorly, Huskies. but they won. Mm. One of the best games I've ever seen was the UConn NC State game. Um, yeah, that was so good last Friday? week. Friday? Mm -hmm. No, what day are we on now? We're on Tuesday. It was Tuesday. It was uh, Monday night. It was Monday night. Monday night. Um, great game. Amazing. That game was so good. The one last night was awful basketball. Awful. Yeah, yeah. it was terrible. Um, well, no, it wasn't. I'm not going to say it's awful basketball. It wasn't basketball. exciting until the end. It was bad offense. It was offense, like, come on, guys. Bad offense, good defense. Turnovers everywhere. Nobody not, was yeah. scoring. Um, we watched Spider-Man. Is it Far From Home? Far From Home. Yes, because the second one was No Way Home. Right. So Far From Home, which was really, really good. I loved um, it. I thought the three of them together... You just spoiled it. You just did a spoiler. Well, no, I didn't. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. The three of them together was great. There was yeah. great chemistry. Um, the story... Do you want to come up and say hello to the, the folks? Yeah, people want to check on you. Come here. Come on. Carry on. Um, The... The story was good. The story was interesting how it tied the three different um it actually now that I think about it, it like this Spider Man played by Tom Holland, his character's taken a different route than the previous Spider Man's played by Toby Maguire and I don't know his name. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. So but there's the story arc of spider-man came kind of full circle in this one like yes. think like it was very very interesting how they did that so i thoroughly enjoyed it yeah i thought it was really good too um oops sorry i just hit the table um it was neat to also see like the old actors and stuff come back like the bad guys hi books hello i see you <laughs> uh what else did we watch i think that's pretty much it it that it's been basketball that and podcasts um which we always list podcasts that we watch down below yeah actually you know what i keep meaning to do i need to make a list of new podcasts because there's been at I least know. three to four that i've watched that we've watched yeah. um that i keep meaning to mention and i just don't have the names and it's not on my phone because we watch them on Apple mm -hmm. TV downstairs. So I'll do that. I'll write those down for next time. Um, and then, so that's really all we've watched. I don't think we've been watching any TV shows. No, we definitely have not. We have no. a lot of things to watch. We do. Um, it's still kind of the same thing. You, you have schoolwork. Yeah, it's we so have, it's it, it is it's I'm take because I'm taking two classes at one time. And we've been separating at night sometimes for him to calm him down. Yeah. He does really well when it's with one of us is when he's really calm. When it's two of us, he thinks it's like playtime and time to do right. stuff. So we kind of need to separate to for his health, um, in our mental health. He's tired. And then I have finished three books. I know. I can't believe that. So. I finished, I finally finished reading my Iron Druid series by Kevin Hearn. Book number nine was called, um, I forgot. Oh, no. Uh, it's in the. I know, it's down below. But 
so this one i was like there was no happy ending in the book but everybody got what they wanted in a weird way um and it left so the main character is atticus he's a druid who's over 2000 years old yeah um all of the books and there's nine of them are kind of like his i don't know everything st stems from book number one um something happens in book one and everything else is the effects of those events and he kind of gets what he deserves so it's not happy but it was good closure that's it the closure of it was good um, like you felt like it ended yeah you there was just a an yeah. end to the to the series so that was good and then i've read three books in this uh, a male male romance series by um Wow, look Dar at the, <laughs> the photo on that one. Wait. Yeah. Jeez, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let's go. <laughs> Hi. Um, here. So this is what... So the first book is called um, Football Sunday. Here's the cover. A football Sunday. The second book <laughs> is Born Again Sinner. Stop it. Hold on. I can't. <laughs> and then book. Oh, no, I read two of those. I'm reading book three now, which is Hetero Flexible. Hetero Flexible? Yeah. Oh, I did the wrong thing. Yeah. So this one's actually. Um, what I actually like about this series is... Hi, Bugs. The author is from Texas. These books take place in a fake town called Spruce, Texas. That, for him, is a different type of place than where he grew up. It's a, He wants to go to you. It's an accepting oh, town. And there's a reverend okay. who's... The family's been there for 50 years and who's very accepting and, and talks about like love is love and all that good stuff. Oh, that's nice. So the town itself is very accepting of the gay community and the books actually take place over several years. The first book takes place, you know, we'll say over a summer. Actually, each book takes place, I think, over a summer and then you shoot ahead a year for the epilogue and then the next book takes place after that. Blah, 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 blah. So we're like going on three to four years in these three books. Um, the first book, the town, it reminds me of like Varsity Blues kind of guy where it's like the quarterback comes home from college. You never saw the whole movie. What? Because you only show me Blues. you only show me those certain scenes when, you know, the Heine and then. No, I love Varsity Blues. How did you, what did we just talk about too that you haven't seen the whole thing of? I don't know. Don't judge me. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's an. It's actually been a pretty enjoyable series. So the first book st starts with um, the main character is Ter Tanner Strong, and he's like you know the jock quarterback, the town's one and only hope of ever yeah. whatever. And then um, the second book, the main character is the preacher's son. Then the third book is Tanner's brother Jimmy. Um, is one of them so it's just it's interesting to see too that the other characters from the two prior books show up in here and how yeah. their lives kind of evolve so right now i think it's a six book series they're really quick reads for me um and it gets me out of the like i just read a bunch of the iron druid ones so it's just like a wind down from that or That's a wind up depending on no wind down it, they're just really easy reads nice so that's it for me I did not finish any books um, because, you know, school. Well, you also don't read a lot at night. I, no, because I fall asleep really quickly. So I'm still working on Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is what I'm reading on my Kindle right now. It is... Um, oh, there's CNN. It's, uh, so Sorcery of Thorns. It's 
really interesting. It is like it's very unique how the magic system works. It's about like sorcerers and like librarians. And the the books like yeah, the books have personalities like in the libraries. Oh. So okay. They're on a scale from, you know, least dangerous to most dangerous, from a class 1 to a class 10. And sometimes the books can come to life, I guess, in a way, and turn into, like, a monster. Oh. I know it sounds a little bit, you know, it's very interesting. They do a good job describing it. Like, you you feel like, okay, that's believable. But, um... You have your librarians who are kind of like the guardians of these books to make sure that nothing bad happens. Sorcery is pretty taboo. The only way that you can get, like, be a sorcerer and have magic is to make a pact with a demon from the underworld. Oh, that's right. I remember you saying this. And so your demon becomes kind of like your familiar, but you, you have to make a pact with them and you trade your life for being able to have some of this power. So, for example, you know, you summon a demon. You can only summon them if you know their real name, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you make a pact with the demon say, I'll give you 20 years of my life. Um, so they'll cut your life 20 years short. Wow. You don't know how it's going to happen or if they're the ones that do it or whatever the case is. But there's always a, a bargain. Mm -hmm. So with that bargain, then you get imbued with these powers if your demon dies, uh, well, your demon can't die in this world, but it can get sent back to the underworld. If it gets sent back to the underworld, you lose your powers. Um, and so you have to, like, resummon them again, and then they'll take more of your life away from you. So it's really interesting. Uh, the story is is good. I like where it's going, for sure. Um, it's entertaining. It's a very easy read. It's not, like, super stressful. I mean, there's drama, but it's like, it's very light. Okay. It's very light. The romance is like, there's a romance brewing, but it's very PG-13. Totally fine. It's not like... Court of Thorns and Roses? Court of Porn. <laughs> not at Court all. Of, Court of Porn and Roses. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, I'm probably about 75% complete uh, <clears throat> with that, which is good. And then I've still been listening on and off to the Wizard's Butler. Wizards Butler. I cannot tell you how much I love this. And and some of you oops, sorry. And some of you told me that it's not um only on Audible cuz oh. last time I said it was Audible exclusive. It's not. It uh if I hit title details will it pull uh, yeah. up the picture? Kind of. Now tap on the picture. Maybe. Nope. Doesn't matter. The Wizard's Butler. We have a lot of glare today. I will, I will read this to you. It's by Nathan Lowell, Lowell and narrated by Tom Taylorson, who's fantastic, by the way. I love it. I love it so much. I want to be in that world. It's it's like real world. It's like it's modern day world. Okay. I love it. And I talked a lot about it last time, so I don't, I don't want to rehash it, but um, it's so good. I have a feeling that I have a feeling that something is going to come to light. And I really hope it does. Me too. I hope it does for you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I have a difficult time because I don't know when I really have, I can like listen to it. So On the car to work, on the car on the way home from work. I have a 10 minute drive. 10 minutes is 10 minutes. That's 20 minutes a day. Sure. That's okay. Right. It's probably more than I actually. That's an read. hour a week. Okay. So I'll be done in like nine weeks. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll I'll um I'll do that. On your walk into work, your walk out, you could have your headphones. No. No, I'm just saying I'm giving you options. I'm giving you Thank you. ways to listen to the book. All right. Thank <clears throat> you for a good looking out, man. When you're doing schoolwork maybe? No, cuz I maybe mm, depends. I doubt it. Okay. So, I believe that's everything. I believe week. that is too. It is a short episode. We're going to be under an hour and a half. What? I don't oh think my. we've ever done that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Do you guys prefer the longer ones? Some people do. We get people all the time who love the two-hour episodes because they get to break it up. Oh, good. I don't mind episodes either. Um, no, when you're watching others? Short, no, yeah, me neither. I don't have a preference when I'm watching other people's podcasts. It really depends. So, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so thank you all for sticking around. This and was watching. fun. Hopefully, the video can actually be uploaded on time, and hopefully, the the setup was okay. Yeah, and well, um, I actually I'm debating too. I kind of prefer. I do kind of prefer our iPad setup. Yeah, possibly. sure. We'll That's see fine. for next time. So we'll be back in two weeks, and then the week after that, the episode after that, we're going to come a day late. Because we're going to go to New York Sheep and Wool. No. Nope. Connecticut Sheep and Wool on Sheep and April. April. Why don't we do it as a live? No. We'll do a live soon. I want to do a live soon. I mean, we could do it. At, um, I don't know. But either way, so on April 30th in North Haven, Connecticut, it is the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival. Yeah. So it will be, we went one time five years ago, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I wasn't even really into crochet. You mean, weren't I was, knitting at no, all. I definitely wasn't knitting. And crocheting, I think I just started, I was just like dabbling, didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah I don't think. Or it might have been, but I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to go. So if you're You weren't in, knitting anywhere near what you knit, how you knit now, though. No. So I think you and I were talking about that recently. Like my knitting, obviously it's picked up doing this. It, yeah, it's sure. It's a good motivator to knit more. Yeah. But my knitting really didn't take off until my dad was doing chemo. Yeah. And Reese was born. Right. The, so Reese would have been... Actually, it's all kind of around the same time. It was around the same time. Because Reese is going to be six. Yeah. Yeah. So. And tomorrow is five years since my dad passed. Wow. So I would have started knitting really all around the same time. Because my dad would have been going through chemo while... Isabella was pregnant with right. Reese. True. I think. Because then, then we just bought, and we bought the house afterwards. No, we were in that house already. Yes, we were. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, yeah. So it all kind of happened no, around. Reese this... wasn't born when we bought the house. No, she was. She. Yes, she was. She no, was... because um, Isabella didn't, because we were painting, remember? She didn't want to come over. And bring Reese. Thought... Reese had been born. Oh, you remember. Right. No, December. December. 18th. 15th. Yeah. 15th. Sorry, Mom. Um, December. And then we moved in in end of January. And then, yeah, so... No, I, they don't care. I know. I'm, Nobody I'm, cares. Sorry, guys. We just went on a tangent. So there goes the hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no, we're still under an hour and a half. All right, good. good job. All right. Wrap it up. So, thank you, everybody, for Land hanging out with us. We will be back. We love, do- I love doing this. Yeah, so... um. Thank you, and we will see you all in a fortnight. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.